Greetings, Crocodile Army. First of all, not to make you feel guilty or anything, but do you have any idea how hard it was to tear myself away from playing Diablo 3 to make this video? I'm on nightmare level with my main character, and I'm really into it. I did manage to find time to go out for dinner a couple times with Mrs. Zonstar over the weekend, and work on another project that many of you will see soon, but almost everything else beyond that feels like a pretty big sacrifice. So, now I guess I know what it feels like to be a martyr. My level 38 barbarian died for your sins. While I was playing my witch doctor on Diablo 3 the other day, I got a message from a 20-year-old member of the Crocodile Army named MK Murmur. He asked, Is Mrs. Zonstar an atheist? If so, what was your wedding like? Last summer I attended a wedding for the first time, and I had mixed feelings about the priest's speech. For every profound sentence about the bond between the people getting married, there was a sentence to the effect of, if you don't keep God close, your marriage is going to fail. As though it were impossible for two people to love each other and get along well without the Christian God popping in to take credit. I don't see why he needs to be involved at all, so for this reason I wanted to know what your wedding ceremony was like. Did you get married in a church, or did you do something else? If I end up getting married, I'd like the event to be a memorable one. Merely signing a yay we're married document isn't very romantic. But I also wouldn't want it to be associated with religion if it can be avoided. Thank you, Zonstar. Please keep up the good work. These are all very good questions and observations, MK Murmur. First off, Mrs. Zonstar and I are in a mixed marriage when it comes to our views on the existence of God. I've always been an atheist, and she's always believed in some sort of higher power. This was never any secret, and it isn't something that's ever bothered either of us. She grew up Catholic, but has secretly, and at least from her parents, considered herself essentially a deist since she was a teenager. It hasn't been an issue because we share interests and goals that are much more basic and fundamental to a successful relationship. We both love food, travel, and lifelong learning. We love new experiences, and we will put in the work it takes to have those experiences. If she were a fundy, then no, I think it would not have worked in that case, but I never felt the need to limit my romantic options to only atheists. I did, however, adhere to a strict humans-only policy. I met Mrs. Zonstar on an online dating site back in 1998, before that sort of thing was fashionable. I really liked the way you could weed out all the undesirables with a few clicks instead of going to a bar and having what were often awkward conversations with people that could be nowhere near your type. That way you could avoid talking to all kinds of people that were full of nonsense, unless you felt the urge to troll, of course. I always wanted to send a message to women who had usernames like onfire4jc316. I would have written something so eloquent and charming. The message would say, I would love to be the single, clean-cut, Christian white male of your dreams, but only if you'll be my naughty little mattress monkey. Once you've found that special masochist that wants to spend the rest of their life with you, there's the question of the wedding. My parents didn't have any preference for the ceremony, but her parents, still being strict Catholics, wanted the wedding to be Catholic. We decided to do a destination wedding in Hawaii for a few reasons. I've never been a member of any church, so I was never baptized. This could be an issue in some Catholic churches, but in Hawaii, if you're from out of state especially, the rules are looser. You can also get married outside on the beach, which normally isn't allowed for a Catholic wedding either. So on September 26, 2000, we got married on a beach near Kona, Hawaii, and had video taken to show our friends and family at the reception that we had already arranged for when we got home. Paying for the wedding on our own made it truly our decision, too. Now, you don't have to go to Hawaii to have a wedding to remember, though. You can get a friend to officiate the wedding. The illustrious Prof. MTH even has a certificate that allows him to do this. If you do feel like you need to have a church wedding to keep the peace, though, all is not lost. You may want to shop around a little to find someone that suits your needs. You can still often do things like write your own vows and personalize the experience. If you don't need to do it in a church, though, you can choose your own location. Invite exactly who you want and make it as sweet and simple or as elaborate as you can dream up without letting the invisible man hold any sway over the proceedings. You can even have a steampunk wedding, or dress up in your favorite furry outfits. Just be prepared to explain those wedding pictures to the grandkids.